Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Vin, and this is Adam. And today, we'll be presenting quiz style question, question generation for news stories. And um, the motivation behind this work was that um, even though an increasing number of users are now consuming their news uh, via the internet, um, a lot of the previous works have only focused on user satisfaction, like clicks or impressions, or um, surveying for media literacy. So um, are people able to determine credibility or, or misinformation or bias? Um, but ultimately, the goal of a good news product is to make its users more informed by the world. So um, our goal was to see if we can um, provide the first work that tries to uh, approximate this, this measurement. And so um, we choose to do this via a multiple uh, choice quiz. And uh, there's been a lot of works in the past that have uh, shown that this is a good approach to take. Uh, primarily, it actually avoids, avoids some biases uh, that you might get if you were to ask people to self-assess their abilities. And um, in fact, there are as ex existing quizzes out there that try to do this. Um, but their main issue is that they're not scalable, and they're usually uh, taken from a fixed pool of questions that were handwritten by some expert. And so they're ran only for a very short period of time. Um, so the problem that we try to tackle is that, um, as a first step, can we actually try to automatically generate these fun and informative questions from the news? Um, the short answer is yes. And this is an example of the type of quiz question that we're able to generate. Um, you see that the question itself captures a lot of the context about the recent news story. And we have a fully natural language uh, answer options. Um, at a high level, uh, we adopt a generative approach to this problem, where we take in an input sequence, which is a uh, news article or, or a summary of a news article, and we generate um, the multiple choice quiz from that the article. And in particular, we um, generate a quiz style multiple choice question, which consists of a question and answer and a set of distractors, which um, are also known as incorrect answer options um, for the question and answer. And we divide um, this particular problem up into two major components, which we'll talk um, in more detail in the next session, called uh, question answer generation and distractor generation. The first component is question answer generation, and I'll be describing how we tackle this problem. Um, so the task of question answer generation is given an input passage, generate the, the question and answer pair. And the special requirement that we have here is that the question must be quiz style, meaning that it must be able to be answered without assuming that the reader has access to any other source material. So it cannot reference any sort of passage. Um, the answer here can even be abstractively generated from the input passage and does not have to be an extractive span. And um, in, in, we actually implement this solution as a sequence, sequence model where we generate the output sequence, which is a concatenation of the question and answer. Um, and to, to learn this quiz style question answer generator, um, we actually need a good, a suitable data set. Um, but it turns out that there's actually no existing data set that captures this quiz style uh, requirement since most um, question generation data sets have just been repurposed from question answering data sets. And so we set out to uh, collect a new data set um, of the quiz style and also in the news domain where we give 5,000 news article summaries to human writers and we ask um, them to write a question answer pair for us. And uh, as you can see on the right, given an input, we actually get four um, equally correct um, target question answer pairs. And the questions are relatively long and descriptive. Um, to learn this data set, there's actually two main challenges. Um, the, the final fine tuning data set, the news quiz QA data set is, is not the largest data set. So how do we deal with that? And secondly, how do we uh, handle the multiple correct output targets? Um, so we, we adopt this sequential training approach um, where we first take a pre-trained model, uh, we choose the Pegasus summarization model. Um, the intuition here is that uh, summarization might share a lot with the type of 
uh, standalone question answer generation tasks that we're targeting. Um, secondly, then we mid-train the model um, using existing question generation data sets, and then we fine-tune the model on our own collected data set. Um, during this mid-training stage, we try to address the problem of um, a lack of data by training on a mixture of all of the existing question generation data sets out there. Um, so in particular, we use SWAD, use QA, and natural questions. Um, one trick that we do, actually, is we um, append the style of the question that we're targeting to the input. And this helps the model actually know what type of question it should generate from the input. And um, this helps performance. Uh, finally, uh, once we have this mid-train model, we fine-tune the model on our news, QA, news quiz QA data set. And um, since this data set has four correct reference outputs, uh, we have to figure out what to do with them. Previous works have actually disaggregated the multiple reference outputs into individual pairs. Um, but we actually instead propose keeping all of the reference outputs together packed into the same batch. And then during training, we actually define a loss over um, all of these uh, correct outputs. And what this loss does, basically, is that given an input, and we have, say, four correct targets, we, uh, during teacher forcing, we compute the aggregated loss against each target. Um, then we take the minimum of these losses and then, up, uh, and then update the gradients for the model ba only based on the target that uh, was the, had the lowest loss. So in some sense, this target was the easiest target to learn. Um, applying all these methods, we actually get uh, very strong results that um, beat very strong baselines. Um, one of our baselines being the uh, T5-3B, uh, which contains um, much uh, many more parameters than our model. Hi, I'm Adam, and I will describe distracted generation. Uh, as a reminder, distracted generation is the task of generating the incorrect answer options. And we have three main goals here um, in terms of distracted quality. First, that distractors should be plausible answers to the question to make the question not trivially easy. Also, they should be distinct from each other and from the correct answer. And finally, in case the question has more than one potential correct answer, uh, we also want the distractors uh, not to be correct answers themselves. And in the previous literature, most of the papers adopted a ranking approach to distractor generation. That is, they assume that they have a set of uh, distractor candidates, and then the task is just to choose the best ones for the question. And typically, because of uh, this approach, they had to start with some sort of heuristic and with a very limited uh, format for distractors, typically just um, entities or, or a small set of words. Um, in contrast, we take a more general approach where we try to generate free-form distractors for any kind of uh, question and answer. Next slide, please. Um, and we take our inspiration uh, from a recent paper by Robert et al. Um, about the, the capacity of models like T5 to learn real world knowledge and, um, and our ability to extract that knowledge by um, what they call closed book question answering. But uh, they demonstrated that um, T5, after like, fine tuning on a question answer data set, um, like natural questions, but they are only given a, the question as the input and have to predict the answer. The model actually generalized to unseen questions to with surprising accuracy, even though the model did not have access to any context or, or outside information to answer the question. So to expand on this method, um, we actually generated our own synthetic question answering data set by running the question answer generation model that's been just described on a large set of news articles. So this way, we had millions of question answer pairs generated by our model. And we fine-tuned T5 um, on this data set 
again, that the fine tuning test was to predict the answer given the question only, in particular, without access to the source um, news article snippet. And uh, at serving time, we sample from the decoder of this sequence to sequence model to get a set of candidates. And in order to make sure that we don't end up with duplicate distractors, um, we use a bird based uh, embedding model uh, to choose distractors that are as far away from each other in the embedding space as possible. And to evaluate the quality of uh, our distractors, we use human evaluation, um, mostly because um, the goal is inherently human and subjective. We, we are trying to fool uh, users, uh, so to speak. So we present human raters um, with our questions and uh, the four answer options, not telling them which one uh, is the correct answer and which ones are the distractors. And we ask them to mark all answer options that they think might be correct and also to mark all duplicate ones. And uh, the re results show that, um, on the next slide, that we do manage to um, fool users uh, uh, quite often and achieve the intended difficulty. So um, there are multiple ways of uh, measuring uh, this success, uh, mostly due to the fact that we ask uh, raters to mark all answer options that they might be correct if they're not sure of the single correct answer. But when raters were sure enough to only mark one answer option as correct, they actually got it wrong 46% uh, percent of the time. 46% of the time they chose a distractor instead of uh, the correct answer um, when they only marked one answer option. Um, also, regardless uh, of how many answer options they are as correct, 39% of the time that those answer options did not include um, the correct answer, it only included distractors. And finally, almost 62% of the time, raters marked at least one of the distractors as a potentially correct answer option. So this shows that the, our questions um, are not too easy, but also not impossibly difficult, which is what we were aiming for. And uh, finally, to demonstrate um, the usefulness of uh, our models uh, in a uh, in memorialistic setting, we ran a uh, real world um, case study on the Google surveys platform, where we showed users a weekly quiz for nine consecutive weeks in the fall of um, last year, focusing on, on uh, news stories about the COVID-19 pandemic. And to make sure that our questions are suitable uh, for real world users, they went through light editing and curation uh, by a journalism expert. The next slide shows an uh, example of this. So these are three questions um, generated by our models, uh, along with the source uh, news article snippet. And the green and the red type shows edits by our journalism expert um, that, as you can see, are mostly minor, focusing on English grammar and style and for uh, consistent style among the answer options. And along with these questions, we asked three satisfaction questions uh, about like how much users like um, our quiz, like does it make them want to learn more about the news topic, uh, read more about it, and would they want to see this as a part of their regular news reading experience. Also, for comparison, we ran a baseline control survey that was more similar to the typical user surveys that uh, users of the Google service platform would encounter that just asks about their news reading habits and also uh, asked them to self-assess their news informativeness. And the results show that we beat the control survey by a significant margin on all of the satisfaction questions. And the average uh, rate of correct answers was a uh, little over half consistent with what we've seen in the distractor evaluations. So to conclude, um, we, we um, showed a novel approach to multiple choice quiz generation. Uh, along with a new data set 
and a real-world case study to show its usefulness uh, for measuring news informedness. Thank you for listening.